Good morning. Can you hear me and can you see the screen? <clears throat> yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, so I think that last time we were at some point uh, close to the uh, Gibbs paradox. Actually, I think we are, that we already saw that uh, if you take uh, um, an entropy with the formula without the Boltzmann counting, uh, for which you have three half kBT, sorry, three half kBn, this entropy, plus nkb logarithm of v, here you have u to the power of 3 half, then 4 third and pi to the power of 3 half, where u was uh, the ratio between energy and number of particles. Then we saw that uh, if you use this formula, and you have a system with n1 particle, v1 particle, uh, volume, sorry, n2 and v2 at fixed temperature. And uh, we suppose that the densities are the same, equal to n, let's say. Of course, this, is impl this implies also that the energy per particles are also the same. We already derived that. And we saw that if you, uh, if you, so, so if you remove this barrier, then you have a, an increase of entropy, which is the mixing entropy, which for two different gases, types of gas. It could be two monatomic gas with, uh, I don't know, with two different chemical species, for instance, or uh, any other uh, feature of uh, uh, these uh, atoms. And uh, if you do, if you do, uh, uh, if you remove this barrier, you have an increase of entropy, which is uh, called mixing entropy which is equal to N1 log of V divided by V1 plus N2 log of V divided by V2, which is correct, okay? Even by using the formula without the Boltzmann counting. Then we said, okay, now suppose that we have the same gas actually, so we cannot distinguish among gas 2 and gas 1 and gas 2 because they are the same, but actually when deriving the uh, increase of entropy we get exactly the same result, which is a paradox. Because if you have a, a box, you introduce a barrier at a certain point, and you just remove it, after, after a while you cannot have an increase of entropy, of course. Okay. Now, this paradox is solved again by the Boltzmann counting. The Boltzmann counting somehow is a, uh, is a, is a way to uh, make uh, the entropy an extensive variable, as it should be, but also it solves the problem of uh, uh, the Gibbs paradox, because now the entropy is not uh, what we said before, but, but it, it has the, the following uh, shape, NKB. Here we have the log of a certain constant divided by the density, where C is a constant. Okay, uh, so now this is the correct formula with Boltzmann counting. Okay, now what do we have uh, uh, now for uh, one single gas What do we obtain by using this formula once we uh, add the barrier and remove the barrier? We should get that the entropy, the increase of entropy is equal to zero. And actually this is the case because uh, before, uh, so in presence of barrier, the total entropy S1 plus S2 will be equal
Can you give me some feedback what happened? Eh, prof, è uscito dalla riunione purtroppo a un certo punto. Ah, è strano perché eh, cioè, sembrava che fosse ancora sotto registrazione. A che punto si è fermata? Pronto? All'inizio praticamente. Eh, ma eh, la registrazione però c'è, vero? Sì, ma non si vede niente. Non si vede niente? No, perché lei è... Cioè, è come se lei fosse uscito dalla chiamata. Oh, caspita. Ma ah, questo è un problema. E... E, vabbè, niente, allora li ripeterò. Cioè, non, non, so, non, non mi sono accorto, c'era scritto che, che stava registrando, però evidentemente non... Ma non sono uscito dalla chiamata, io non ho premuto proprio il computer, forse c'è stato un calo della linea. Adesso, per esempio, sta registrando. Sì, ma di fatti, prof, la registrazione è continuata, solo che eh. appunto non vedevamo e non sentivamo niente. Ah, ho capito, ho capito. Eh, vabbè, eh, sentite, fino a che punto ci siamo, si è fermata? Cioè, non so, la Jeeps Paradox l'abbiamo fatto, si è, si è sentito? Eh, no, prof, siamo arrivati, almeno io, a quando ho scritto S1 più S2, quindi proprio all'inizio più o meno. Caspita. Ah, vabbè, io spero che prima o poi si possa ritornare alla normalità perché sta diventando veramente complicato. Allora, eh, dunque, la, la finestra si vede? Adesso la finestrina? Sì. Si vede, la registrazione sembra esserci. Quindi direi che dovremmo essere a posto, spero. Non so, secondo me c'è stato forse... Si è, si è chiusa la linea all'improvviso. E... Vabbè. Vabbè. Prof, scusi, mi sente? Sì, sì. sì. Beh, sì. magari in qualche modo ha registrato il suo schermo. Lei ha modo di controllare... Cioè, magari sto... Non, non riesco a sentire salta la linea registrazione se magari ha registrato il suo di schermo ah, no, non ho capito okay. perché è saltata <ride> non ho capito perché è saltata Spiace, la linea perché volevo dire magari visto che lei immagino abbia avviato la registrazione mi sente prof salta la linea. Ah. Eh, sì ogni cioè, a scatti um, no adesso forse sì mh, non so prov prova di nuovo Uh, sì, stavo proponendo, visto che magari è lei che ha avviato la registrazione, magari in qualche modo si può recuperare, cioè magari ora interrompe la registrazione e può controllare se almeno dalla sua parte è registrato così non deve ripetere tutto. E dalla mia parte ho registrato, non so come, cioè, come faccio a controllarlo. Eh, ma non... Eh, non so, magari a voi arriva il drive, il... Um... Cioè, il, una volta interrotta la registrazione può controllare in modo da non ripetere tutto. Mm. Eh, eh, realtà, vabbè. Il problema è che Zoom, ad esempio, registra nel suo computer, eh, Meet registra on online, per cui se le è caduta la connessione non, non è arrivato il segnale neanche dal server dove viene effettivamente registrato il video. C'è cioè, successo la stessa cosa con Vidorzi nel primo semestre. Ah, ecco. Vabbè, sentite, allora facciamo così, eh, spieghiamo questo Gips Paradox, lo finisco e poi i due esercizi che, che ho fatto, poi magari li ci teniamo a fine corso, se li riusciamo a fare, hm? e poi vado un po' avanti, ok? Va bene, grazie. Mi dispiace, eh, io proprio non mi sono accorto che, che fosse andato via, purtroppo, non mi sono proprio accorto, ok? Ok, so let's repeat the, 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 Gips, the Gips paradox. So may, maybe you, you stop me if I say something that you have heard already, because now I don't know at, at which point the, the, the record was uh, out. Uh, so, what we, so to make a summary of what we did last time, or <laughs> in the previous half an hour, uh, we said that when using the formula of... Uh, um, of entropy uh, without the Boltzmann 
counting correction, uh, we get a paradox, and the formula was the following, log of b, u to the power of 3 half, 4 third m pi to the power of 3 half, where u is equal to e divided by m. We get a paradox when considering the situation in which I have uh, two gases in two parts of this box separated by a barrier. And we say that delta S by removing, after removing the barrier was equal to um, KB. Uh, KB and one logarithm of V divided by V1 plus KB and two logarithm of V divided by V2. And this is larger than zero. Okay. You get the same exactly formula if you have two different gas or if you have the same. Okay. And this is the Gibbs, the Gibbs paradox. Okay. Because there is no way. Uh, to uh, there's no um, somehow if you apply the same formula here you just get the same result even if the two gases are the same in the different parts of the box now what you do is to consider the formula with with Boltzmann counting in which the entropy was equal again to this 3 half NKB which does not play any role so let me just uh, put this uh, uh, symbol because it will not change anything then I have an NKB logarithm and here I have a C divided by N where C is a constant constant okay now you compute the change of entropy by using this formula for the same gas and for two different gas. So case one, same gas. The initial entropy is, uh, uh, apart from this term, which will anyway drops, uh, is a N1 KB logarithm of C divided by N1 plus N2 KB, 2 KB, logarithm of C divided by N2. Uh, let's put a plus here. Now, if you, so this before removing the barrier, after removing the barrier, we get that the entropy is just, uh, again, this term that will not do anything. Then here we have just N1 plus N2 KB logarithm of C divided by N. Now the thing is that, uh, uh, so let's put uh, after here and here before, the thing is that when you do SA minus SB, you just have, uh, um, let me uh, make it, so you have a KB and one logarithm of uh, C divided by N, and N1 divided by C plus KB and 2 logarithm of C divided by N and 2 divided by C. This drops, drops, and also N1 and N, N2 and N, because N is equal to N1 equal to N2 by hypothesis. Okay, so that is this, then this means that the difference SA minus SB is equal to zero when you have the same gas. So you solve the Gibbs paradox. When you have two different gases instead, what you get is the following. Let me change page. Uh, when you have two different Uh, the delta S, which is equal to S after minus S before, is equal to N1 KB logarithm of, uh, here you have, uh, uh, in the final state, uh, you have uh, V um, divided by um, 
n1 times a certain constant k, okay, where k is a constant, uh, plus n2 kb logarithm of k v divided by n2 minus n1 kb logarithm of k, here I have v, v1 divided by n1 minus n2 to kb logarithm of k v2 divided by n2. Now when doing the calculation, of course, you can collect this n1 kb and you get the logarithm of k v divided by n1 divided by k v1 and 1. So you just get v divided by v1 plus n2 kb logarithm of v divided by v2 as before, exactly as before, and therefore this entropy is larger than zero, okay? So when co introducing the Boltzmann counting, the Boltzmann counting, we get two things. We solve the problem of the extensivity of the entropy in the sense that now the entropy after Boltzmann counting is an extensive variable, and we solve the Gibbs paradox. So if you have a box and you introduce a barrier and you remove this barrier, the entropy will not change for a gas with same particles. Whereas if you have a box with two sides, uh, two parts of the box occupied by one type of particle and another type of particle separated by a barrier, you remove this barrier and you have an increase of entropy, which is this uh, mixing entropy. So the fact that you are now mixing uh, particles of different species and this uh, uh, changes a lot the phase space if you want, increases a lot the phase space. Indeed, in order to understand, uh, well, to, or to make another example of this, what I did before is to uh, compute, uh, to make a sort of exercise and compute the entropy for three n identical monatomic monoatomic and ideal uh, particles so ideal gas with three n particles monatomic particles and compute s for a situation in which we have n n n red now particles blue particles and green particles well these colors are of course just an example uh, what you uh, using of course by using the sacrated formula What you get, and uh, let me uh, just tell you the result, then if you want we can try to do it. Um, well, actually, let, let's do it uh, anyway, it's not, it's not, uh, it does not take too much time. Now, S is equal to 3 half NKB plus, let's write the final formula that we obtain, NKB logarithm of E divided by n lambda cubed. Okay. This is the formula that we need to use. Now, in this case, when using this formula, we get that the total entropy is a 3 half kb times the no number of particles, which is 9 half kbn, plus 3n uh, kb logarithm of e divided by n lambda cubed for the case in which we have red, blue, and, uh, uh, par and uh, green particles. For the case, uh, let me change page. For the case in which we have uh, uh, same particles, the, so S of 3N, I have a uh, 9 half NKBN plus N 3NKB logarithm of e divided by lambda cubed 
and here I just need to be careful because here you have three n. Why? Why m is uh, uh, the here what appears is a density, okay? And of course, if the number of particles is three n in the same in the same volume, now the, the density is three n, okay? Three times small n. When computing s minus s three n, then you can get uh, the result. You just have a three n kb logarithm of three, so it's larger. So that means that when you have a mixture of particles with different uh, colors, for instance, different features, uh, is uh, it has a larger entropy with respect to a situation in which you have the same number of particles but equal particles. Okay. And of course, this is uh, due to the mixing entropy, okay? This is due to the mixing entropy. So if you have a situation here in which you have a box with three and identical particles, uh, or a situation in which you have, uh, uh, let's say, n particles red, n particles blue, and n particles green. Now these two systems can have the same temperature, same pressure, same volume, but, but of course there is no reason here to have the red particles at the bot uh, at the upper edge of the box and the green particles at the bottom. You can just mix them, okay? So there is a, a lot of phase space more with respect to the previous case, okay? A lot of uh, uh, so there are more ways, more ways to arrange the system, okay? So that's why the entropy uh, is larger. And I did another example uh, this time that I will sketch, because anyway, is an exercise of uh, thermodynamics. And the, the example was the same, maybe I can just uh, uh, provide some hints and then you can try to do it. So to compute differences of entropies between a state A and B, in thermodynamics, and by using the Sakur tetrod equation formula. And of course, you should get the same result, okay? Now, uh, for the Sakur tetrod formula, we get that S is equal to, for a monatomic ideal gas, of course, and 3 alpha NKB plus NKB. <clears throat> Here we had the logarithm of uh, E divided by N, and then I have a lambda cubed, uh, which is equal to 3 half NKB plus NKB logarithm of a certain constant k that will drops, will drop. And here I have a volume v, and the lambda is proportional to t to the power of one half. So one over lambda cubed uh, scales as three to the t to the power of three half. Okay, where k is a constant. Now, so we have a scaling in the log, uh, which is V times T to the power of 3 half for the Sakur tetrad formula. Now you can collect, and, and this of course is absolute, temp, uh, absolute entropy, so it contains more information with respect to what we can get in thermodynamics, in which case we can just compute difference in entropies. So let's now work out the same in thermodynamics. We have a state A and a state B. And 
you know that the, the entropy is a state variable and we can compute differences in entropies by following a path that I like, okay? A reversible path, of course. In such a way I can do the calculation. Now, one way to do it uh, is to imagine that I have a state A star so in such a way that the volume of A star is equal to the volume of B and that the temperature of A star is equal to the temperature of A. So I can, col I can connect A and A star, A star by following an isothermal path. And they can col connect A star and B by following an isochoric transformation, okay? Now, uh, we can compute the difference S of A star minus S of A, the difference S of me minus S of A star, and then sum of sum them, make the sum of them, and we, see, we can see what, what we get, okay? Now, this is an isothermal, whereas this is an isochoric transformation. For isothermal, in general, we have TDS is equal to PDV plus CV dt, where CV for a monatomic ideal gas is 3 half NKB. And here, uh, the difference in entropy since this isothermal gets a contribution just from the pressure, okay? You can work out this, I just uh, leave, it, I leave it to you as an example, as an exercise, and you can then say uh, if you uh, manage to do it, but it should be very easy, uh, VB divided by VA, uh, where I have used the info that V of A star is equal to VB. Uh, and this is the change of entropy in this case, whereas the change of entropy in the second case, in which now we, the volume is fixed, but the temperature is changing, uh, in this case you get a CB logarithm of TB divided by TA, which is equal also to NKB logarithm of TB divided by TA to the power of 3 half. Okay? And now you see that we, when you sum them, the sum of so the difference between SB and SA uh, uh, is uh, actually uh, correct, is consistent with the Sakur Tetra formula because you will get uh, NKB logarithm of VBTB to the power of 3 half and VATA to the power of 3 half as in the Sakur tetrod formula. Okay? Now, this is a sketch of this exercise. If you want to try to do it, uh, and uh, you can then tell me if you manage to do it, but it should be easy, okay? Because it's just ideal gas, you use just the usual equation. So now, let me go on. And uh, let me just introduce this calculation, then we uh, will stop for a break. Now, what I want to do is to find another relation because that is not usually uh, found uh, when doing thermodynamics, which is uh, the chemical potential of the ideal gas. Once we get this formula for the chemical potential of ideal gas, we can uh, do another application of this uh, formula, uh, which is uh, uh, study uh, chemical uh, transformations, chemical reactions, okay? And introduce the uh, so-called uh, law of mass action. But the first thing that I want to compute uh, is the uh, chemical potential of ideal and let's say also monatomic, monatomic gas, okay?
The starting point is again the Sarkov Tetrot formula that tells me that the entropy is equal to 3 half NKB plus NKB. Here I have a logarithm of E divided by N lambda cube. This was the final formula having both the correct Boltzmann counting and the uh, H Planck constant uh, that uh, was uh, providing the correct uh, dimensions to the argument of the logarithm, okay? Lambda is the thermal de Broglie wavelength, which is uh, H2m pi kBT. And let us also remember that PV is equal to N kb t and u the internal energy or uh, uh, the energy because we are still in the micro canonical ensemble is uh, uh, three half uh, um, three half n k b t and if you want here you can also compute the ratio between u and n the ratio between u and n is equal to uh, 3 half kb t from which u two thirds u divided by n is equal to kb t the reason for which I'm doing this uh, will be clear in a moment Now this is the entropy and here we have some relations that I need to use uh, uh, in a moment. Now what is the chemical potential? The chemical potential can be found from this equation. Remember that TDS is equal to PdV uh, plus du minus mu dn when we are which is the first principle of thermodynamics. Uh, by considering also the possibility of changing the number of particles. Now, from this equation, I get that the mu is equal to minus uh, T times the partial derivative of the entropy with respect to N. This is important at fixed U and fixed V. Okay? This is the chemical potential. This is minus T derivative of the entropy with respect to the number of particles at fixed u and at fixed volume, okay? Now, these two constraints are actually important because uh, now that means that suppose that you want to change uh, the number of particles because you, are wa you want to see how the entropy changes as, a, as, the, as the number of particles, as a function of the number of particles. But you have to fix u and v. So that means that uh, since u is uh, itself a function of n, when modifying n, I need to modify, uh, in order to keep u constant, I need to modify uh, the, the temperature. So let me write this. In order, when changing, when changing n, in order, to keep u fixed, since uh, u divided by n is uh, provided by this formula, formula, I need to change the temperature. That's why it's better to write again the sakur tedrol formula in such a way that we have uh, clearly uh, under our eyes, the quantities that are fixed and the quantities that can change, okay? So let's do the following and uh, let's actually write S as 3 half NKB plus NKB logarithm of E divided by N. This N, what is N is just N divided by the volume and so I can write this as N and V at the numerator, where V is a constant and N instead is changing when doing a derivative. And then we have a lambda cubed and the lambda cubed is provided by the following equation. Uh, where is the lambda? Uh, it was here. You see from here that lambda 
is h divided by the square root of 2 m pi then I have a 1 divided by square root of kBT okay so 1 divided by the square root of 2 third u divided by n okay and so instead of lambda cubed now let me uh, write uh, um, this uh, as uh, h cubed then I have a 2 m pi and a 2 third to the power of 3 half and then I have a u uh, divided by n to the power of 3 half okay let me check one moment if this is correct I have a 3 n k b plus n k b the logarithm v n e lambda cubed plus uh, uh, v divided by n e h cubed to m pi to third okay un the power of 3 okay good now this is the starting point and as I said one has to be careful because uh, if I want to compute a derivative of mu of s with respect to n by keeping u and v constant it's better to write all the variables in the entropy formula in such a way to single out which are the quantities that are uh, constant and the quantities that are changing when changing n okay and so the, the temperature as I said before uh, is changing now we can compute uh, the uh, correctly the derivative so let's make derivative of s with respect to n at fixed volume and fixed internal energy uh, by using the formula that we had before, I get a 3... Prof, scusi, no, no, foglio, grazie, grazie. Let's compute the derivative of S with respect to N at fixed volume and internal energy by using the formula that we just derived. So I have a 3 half KB plus... Uh, I have a derivative with respect to N, so I, I get a KB and here I will get the same formula as before, so the logarithm of uh, V e divided by n lambda cubed, which I do not need to specify at the moment because I'm deriving with respect to n. Now you have to derive the logarithm, and this is the problem. Well, the problem this is more tricky. Here you have n kb and the derivative with respect to n of the logarithm of now let me introduce the quantities that I need so I have a V here I have a N then I had a, a um, factor of E uh, then I have a, a U to the power of 3 half and N to the power of 3 half times a certain quantity that I can consider to be constant. Well, actually, let me write it as it, as it was before. So V divided by N, E, and U, and then I had a 2 M pi to third to the power of 3 half, the power, oh, my God. let me go back here, and KB derivative with respect to N of the logarithm of 1 divided by n, 1 divided by n to the power of 3 half, then I have a volume, then I have a constant e, u to the power of 3 half, 2 m pi to third to the power of 3 half, and I think I have still 1 over h cubed. Let me check if this is correct. Uh, n and n is okay, volume e, u to the power of 3 half, 2 and pi to the third and h cubed. Okay, so let me call this quantity now uh, k, because this quantity is constant. Why is constant? Because v volume is fixed and u is fixed mm, for computing uh, uh, the chemical potential. All the other quantities are constants. So that's, that's, therefore, I have an NKB 
derivative with respect to n of the logarithm of a certain constant divided by n to the power of 5 half. Okay? Which is equal to, um, well, n kb, then I have the derivative of the logarithm, which means, uh, let me take this outside, which means uh, n to the power of 5 half divided by k, then I have an additional k, then I have a minus 5 half, and to the power or power of minus 7 half. And I think I get everything here. Of course, k and k can be removed, and these terms provides uh, uh, just a factor of kb times 5 half. So a minus 5 half, and then I have 5 half, 5 minus 7 is minus 2, divided by 2 minus 1, that cancels with this. So we have minus 5 half kb. Okay, so the derivative of S with respect to N at fixed volume and fixed internal energy is 3 half kb plus kb, the logarithm of V e divided by N lambda cubed, minus 5 half kb, uh, which is equal 3 minus 5 is minus kb. So I have a kb logarithm of um, uh, v e divided by n lambda cubed minus kb, but kb can be written as kb times the log of e. Log of e is just 1. And therefore, I just need, uh, I have a kb logarithm of v divided by n lambda cubed. Now, this was the derivative of s with respect to n at fixed volume and fixed internal energy. In order to get the chemical potential, I need to multiply by the temperature. And therefore, the chemical potential will be minus TKB, or minus, well, KBT, times the logarithm. Here I have a minus, therefore the lambda goes to the numerator. So I have a N lambda cubed divided by the volume. Okay, which also can be written as KBT, logarithm of N lambda cubed, where N is the ratio between N and volume. Okay, so this is the final formula for the chemical potential of a monatomic ideal gas. So I have a KBT, the logarithm of N times lambda cubed. Now let me make a, a, a couple of comments and then we stop for a while. Uh, let me change page, first of all. So mu is equal to KBT logarithm of n lambda cubed uh, n lambda cubed yes n lambda cubed kbt and let's close this now, uh, for ideal gas, the ideal gas hypothesis works when, as I said, uh, another context is correct. If we had to, we we are dealing with ideal gas, which means uh, uh, small density. So n lambda cubed, in order to uh, treat it as a gas classical system must be much smaller than one, that means that they have small densities, in such a way that uh, the volume available for a particle is larger than the volume that you obtain by squaring, or by making the uh, lambda to the power of three, okay? So the distance between particles is much larger than the thermal de Broglie wavelength, and that this is, uh, of course, a way to neglect a situation in which you can neglect quantum mechanics and you can treat the particles as classical particles. So if n lambda cube is much smaller than one, that means the chemical potential for ideal gas is negative. 
ok? Negativo. And actually, this behavior is correct uh, for ideal gas and will be actually much different in the case in which we have, uh, uh, for instance, fermions for which the chemical potential is positive, at least uh, a small temperature. Okay. The fact that this is negative is, uh, uh, is maybe not very intuitive, but uh, uh, it comes from the subtle uh, uh, interplay uh, which uh, uh, which you have when you change the number of particles and uh, uh, you want to keep constant the internal energy and the volume okay so if you increase uh, the number of particles uh, in general you will you will change uh, the internal energy and the entropy but since one of them uh, in particular the internal energy has to be constant uh, so the increase of entropy must be somehow uh, reduced, uh, must, by, must be compensated, if you want, by reducing, uh, uh, by having this negative chemical potential. Because, uh, let me write back again this equation, TDS is equal to uh, PdV plus du uh, minus uh, mu dn, okay? This was the formula from which we started. So you can also write this as du is equal to mu dn plus tds minus pdv. Therefore, from here you can see that uh, the, inter uh, the chemical potential can be interpreted also as a derivative of u with respect to n, but a fixed entropy and fixed volume, okay? So you can compute mu also in this fashion, du divided by dn at fixed entropy and fixed volume. Or as we did before by deriving the entropy with respect to n and v, uh, with respect to n at fixed volume and internal energy, okay? So maybe the fact that this is negative is, is easier to understand uh, in this way because when you increase the number of particles, you will increase u, but since you have to fix uh, uh, the entropy, you need a negative quantity that uh, here compensate uh, if you want uh, uh, the increase of entropy, okay? Okay, so uh, this formula uh, is uh, uh, mu is equal to kBT logarithm of uh, n lambda cubed can be written also, and we will use this in a moment, uh, in the following way. Remember that P is equal to KBN times T for ideal gas monatomic, uh, from which we get that N is P divided by KBT. And uh, uh, so this can be written as KBT log of, uh, uh, instead of N, I can put P divided by KBT. times lambda cubed, which is equal to a KBT, KBT times the logarithm of the pressure plus KBT logarithm of lambda cubed divided by KBT. For reasons that will be clear, uh, well, maybe not today, but next time, uh, it is uh, uh, useful to introduce a quantity here that is called chi, which is just a function of temperature, as you can see, because you have T here and the lambda contains just the temperature. As this chi, this uh, quantity, is called the chemical constant. and depends on T and on the properties of the atoms, such as, for instance, we will see the generacy, uh, monatomic, uh, diatomic, uh, etc. So it contains info about the atomic species. Okay, 
uh, we will see uh, in the specific case of a monatomic gas uh, uh, how to uh, use this expression. Okay, so this can be closed. Now I think that we can stop for five minutes and then we continue with chemical reactions.
Ok, can I proceed? Yes. Ok, thanks. Uh, now, what we will do is to use the chemical potential, uh, this formula for the chemical potential, in order to um, derive an equation which is uh, uh, an equation which is being used uh, in, in chemistry but also in all the context in which you have uh, somehow some reactions uh, which is the law of mass action uh, now uh, of course when talking about reactions uh, uh, the the role of chemical potential is important because the chemical potential if you want plays the same role of the temperature uh, in, in the, with respect to this exchange of energy. So if you have two systems uh, which are in thermal equilibrium, that means that the temperatures are the same. If you, are two, if you have two systems which are in chemical equilibriums, in chemical equilibrium, that means the chemical potentials of the two uh, systems are the same, okay? So somehow, the chemical potentials, it provides the information that you need when you, when you deal with a system in which the number of particles is changing or some species are changing. And this is a situation, of course, that you have in chemistry, but you can have, uh, well, in uh, in every type of multi-particle system, so in the sun, in uh, in the stars, in the plasma, etc. So in all the cases in which you can have some chemical reaction, or in terms of particle physics, uh, you would better uh, consider uh, cross-section as uh, uh, associated with unelastic scattering, then in that case, uh, you have uh, to do with uh, uh, chemical, the situation of chemical equilibrium, uh, and then to you, in order to, to see how the, the, the system will change, you need to consider uh, the chemical potentials. And therefore, let us introduce uh, uh, this, the formalism of uh, uh, chemical reactions, which, as I said before, is, are not, uh, uh, is not limited to the fact of real chemistry, but can be uh, another, any other process of nuclear physics or particle physics. The chemical reactions are written in this form, uh, the sum from I to a certain number of uh, species of particles of nu I, A, I equal to zero. So this is an equation of a chemical reaction in which AI is the symbol associated with the molecule of the atom or the species. Symbol for the type of particle. Whereas new I are called the stoichiometric coefficients. Well, you might remember them from chemistry. And the chemical reaction is written in this form. It's a sum of I of new I, AI. Okay, so examples of those. Uh, let's take this, uh, 2NH3 minus 3H2 minus N2 is equal to zero. Uh, these are chemical reaction, of course, for which A1 is equal to NH3, A2 is equal to H2, hydrogen, and A3 is nitrogen, is N2. The stoichiometric coefficient in this case are nu1 is equal to two, nu2, is equal to minus 3 and nu3 is equal to minus 1. Now the sign of this stoichiometric coefficient is arbitrary in the sense that uh, of course I can write this equation in a slide by multiplying by, the, by a minus. So then the sign is arbitrary but uh, the results of course will not depend on the specific way you choose the sign of those stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, for what I brought here the, there is a plus 2 minus 3 minus 1. This is an example from chemistry, but we have another example in particle physics, at least another example, I can, I can do it. But we have many, of course, think about the fusion reaction in the sun. The, those are complicated nuclear reactions that are written in the same form. 
For instance, let's consider an electron captured by a proton uh, that produces a neutron and electron neutrino. In this case, A1 is equal to the electron, A2 is the proton, A3 is the neutron, and A4 is the neutrino. In this case, the, co the stoichiometric coefficients are respectively 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. Okay, so uh, those are the, the, the form of chemical reaction. Now, suppose that we have a system of multiparticles of different type of particles. that can have some kind of interaction in such a way that the number of those particles can change. And suppose that this is the system is at fixed temperature and fixed pressure. Okay. Uh, and we can have some chemical re reaction. between the particles. So the number of particles of a, of a certain species uh, can change in time is the, if the system is not in chemical equilibrium, okay? Uh, now, since the pressure and the temperature is fixed, and the to in any case, the total number of particles is conserved, uh, this is a system in which uh, uh, we have to uh, minimize the Gibbs free energy uh, in order to fulfill the second principle of thermodynamics. So from the second principle, we have to minimize, minimize the Gibbs free energy. Minimizing the Gibbs free energy since that in a state in uh, thermodynamical equilibrium, which in this case means basically chemical equilibrium, the variation of the Gibbs free energy must be equal to zero. But the variation of the, of the Gibbs free energy is provided by a sum over J of uh, with this is this has been derived by mu j times the nj okay where mu j is the chemical potential of the species j and the nj is the number of particles uh, in the in this j state okay now suppose that you have uh, that we have uh, n reactions reactions for instance per unit time although this is not uh, very important for n reactions uh, such as the one that i wrote before per unit time i can write that the variation of d and j must be equal to n which is the number of rea reaction i have not changed the page so D and J is equal to the total the number of reactions per unit time times uh, mu J times the stoichiometric coefficient because the stoichiometric coefficients uh, is the one that counts the number of species uh, in the equation of uh, uh, of the chemical reaction. Okay, so this uh, number of reactions per unit time. And since each of these reaction contains new J particles of the species J, uh, the number of the, the variation of this number is just uh, N times new J. That means that when minimizing the, the Gibbs free energy, namely when imposing that the sum over J of mu D and J is equal to zero, Actually, that means that the sum of J of mu D and J, so N mu J, is equal to zero. So I can remove this N, 
and therefore I get an equation this that here this is a j missing mu j mu j is equal to zero. This is the equation of chemical equilibrium. that was derived in a slightly different way, well, actually in a, sim in a, in a situation simpler than this one uh, previously. Mm -hmm. This equation tells just that the chemical potential, the sum of the chemical potential times the stoichiometric coefficients is equal to zero in chemical equilibrium, okay? So if you have an electron capture process such as this one, uh, just to make an example of uh, uh, closer to what physicists are doing, then you have to impose that the chemical potential of electrons plus the chemical potential of protons is equal to the chemical potential of neutron plus the chemical potential of neutrino. Okay, these are relation of chemical equilibrium, and this is the situation in which the system is in uh, chemical equilibrium. So we have to impose that the, the, the sum of the chemical potential. Each with each each one uh, with his uh, 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 stoichiometric coefficient is equal to zero. Okay. Now let's use now the formula that we obtain for mu j. For mu j, we have a formula now which was a kBT, the logarithm of pj, if you want. Uh, then there was the chemical constant, uh, chemical constant, which was uh, ki j plus chi j, sorry, chi j. Okay. So we can write this equation, zero is equal to sum over j over mu j times nu j as the sum over j, mu j is a kBT, nu j log of pj uh, pa, 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 so kbt log of pj times nu j plus the sum over j of chi j nu j and this must be equal to zero uh, let me introduce a quantity which is the concentration of particle cj is the concentration and by definition this is the number of particles j divided by the total number of particles so where n is the total number of particles and it does introduce also the is a pj which is the pressure or the J component, this is called partial pressure. And the total pressure is the sum of, over, over all the pressures. So the total pressure P is the sum over J of PJ. And of course now PJ and P uh, must be related to each other by a concentration in the sense that we can write that pj is equal to cj times p where p is the total pressure and the pj is the partial pressure and cj is the concentration of the species okay why we, we have this uh, uh, definition of the partial pressure? The pressure scales as the number of particles, okay? So it's linear uh, in, the, in the number of particles, therefore must be proportional to uh, Cj. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you want, in another words, uh, N, so the Cj is the ratio between Nj and N, and similarly, Pj is the pressure between Pj and uh, MP, okay, it's partial pressure and concentration. Uh, sorry, what is the, sorry, this I wrote something wrong. Uh, CJ is the ratio between NJ and N, and uh, um, PJ is just the, uh, the, if you want, 
pj is just cjp sorry this was wrong pj is cjp okay because p in general is proportional to n so i expect that if i have a certain number of particles the pressure is proportional to the number of particles and therefore the partial pressure is, is a portion of the total pressure which is proportional to the number of particles in the j state okay so by introducing these two quantities we can work out a little bit more this expression and we get that zero so the equation of chemical equilibrium was the sum over j of K, kbt here we have the log of pj which can be written as the log of cj no, non ho cambiato foglio sì. incredibile sta cosa non mi entra in mente uh, kbt log of cj plus and kbt is outside log of p times new j is equal plus sum over j of nu j chi j equal to zero uh, from which we can get that minus one divided by kbt sum over j of chi j nu j is equal to um, uh, here we have um, sum over j of the log of cj to the power of mu j plus uh, here we have the log of uh, p that can be put outside the sum and then I have the sum over j of mu j okay which is equal let me write this in a same fashion and here we have the log of p to the power of uh, j sum of j of new j okay uh yeah and so now let me find from this equation uh let me single out this term here so the sum over j of the log of cj to the power of new j is equal to minus 1 divided by kbt sum over j of chi j nu j uh, minus log of p to the power of the sum of j of nu j nu j okay okay let me make an exponential of this When I do the exponential of the sum of the log, I have exponential, so the product of several exponential, since there is a log, it's just a, a product. So this is the product over j of cj to the power of nu j on the uh, left-hand side, whereas here I have uh, p to the power of uh, uh, minus uh, uh, sum over j of nu j because I have to do the exponential of this expression uh, ta, ta, ta. So and then I have this other quantity so let me call it a of t where a of t by definition is a a of t by definition is the exponential of 1 minus uh, 1 divided by kbt sum over j of chi j nu j and this quantity actually has a name uh, times uh, the other quantity it has a name which is called reaction constant that I'm going to write in a moment and let me see what we have here here you have the exponential of minus the log of p to the power of the sum over j that can be written as p to the power of minus the sum over j of nu j okay i think i have everything there p c j nu j a t 
And yes, okay. Now this equation here is called low, let me put an asterisk here, low of mass action. And it is basically another way to write the chemical equilibrium equation. And the product of AT times P to the minus sum over J of nu J is called the chemical equilibrium constant or reaction constant. Reaction constant. Or equilibrium constant. Okay. And notice that this equilibrium constant or reaction constant depends on the pressure, the total pressure and the, in the temperature. And of course, depends also on the chemical species that you have inside because uh, the chi of J contains some information about the chemical species. Okay. But this quantity does not depend on the concentration of particles. All the concentration are in the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we have the pressure of the gas, the total pressure of the gas, the total, uh, well, the temperature and the properties of the chemical species. So this equation actually is very useful to in determining in which way, in which direction a reaction is going. So let's make an example. Let me change page. Example. Suppose that we have uh, uh, this uh, chemical reaction H2Cl2, and we get the we uh, we consider the two uh, direction of this reaction Cl twice twice Cl, and let's write the law of mass action in this case. Now here you have the concentration of H2, okay? Then I have the concentration of Cl2, which which have a stoichiometric coefficients one. Then the stoichiometric coefficients of HCl is minus two, and therefore by using the previous formula, this is the concentration of HCl to the power of two. And this must be equal to A of T, because in this case, uh, since the stoichiometric coefficients are 1, 1, and minus 2, the sum of the stoichiometric, stoichiometric coefficient is, uh, uh, is 0, and P to the power of 0 is, of course, uh, 1. So now, in this case, does not depend on the pressure. Okay, now what we obtain from this relation is the following. This can be computed, it depends on T, and the properties, the intrinsic properties of the chemical species. Okay. Whereas in the left hand side, we can have the, for instance, the initial concentration of these uh, uh, types of molecules. This can be computed from scratch once you know the temperature and once you know the chemical species. This is something that you, ex you can change in your experimental setup. So suppose that you have uh, this number, uh, is, uh, you have A, which is a large number large number of A and you can, uh, well, you can compare basically what you have uh, as initial, initial on the left hand side with the initial um, concentrations and compare with A of T. So suppose that you have uh, uh, A of T, which is a certain number and suppose that this quantity on the left hand side uh, for instance, uh, uh, is uh, is um, is small, 
Small means that you have a small amount of CH2 and CCl2. That means that the reaction will act in such a way to increase the number of H2 and Cl2, okay, at fixed AT. On the other hand, uh, if you have a small amount of this quantity here that we have on the right, um, this will term will be larger than A of T and the reaction will proceed in such a way to increase the number of ACL of these molecules, okay? Um, so if A, or in other terms, if A is large, <clears throat> we have a small concentration of, of ACL, and whereas if A is small, at, equi at equilibrium, of course, uh, you, we have uh, a, a large concentration of ACL, okay? And so therefore, the reaction will move in such a way in order to reach uh, this number here, okay? So if this number, if you want, is larger than AT, that means that you have a too large concentration or too small concentration of ACL and you will produce the reaction uh, from left to the right, okay? So suppose that uh, we have CH2, CCL2, CHCL squared experimental or initial, larger than A of T, in that case, that means that you have too small amount of the uh, uh, HCl molecules, and therefore the reaction will proceed better in this way, in order to reach the thermodynamical, the chemical equilibrium in this case. Okay, whereas if this quantity is smaller than A of T that you can compute from the beginning, and then you will have the reaction that will go in the other way. So you have a dissociation of these molecules. Okay, now similarly, let's make just another example and then let's close this session. Suppose that you have uh, the formation of molecular hydrogen, and so let's have this reaction, hydrogen plus hydrogen, that can go in H2. Now, in this case, the stoichiometric coefficients are 1, 1, and nu3 is equal to minus 1. Therefore, when writing the law of mass action in this case, we have the concentration of uh, a CH to the power of 2, and then below we have uh, C of H2. And this quantity must be equal to A of T, as before, and we have uh, a pressure at the denominator, because uh, uh, I have 1 plus 1 minus 1, which is 1, then I have an additional minus 1 in the law of mass action, therefore I have a pressure in the denominator. Uh, so what that means uh, is that uh, if you have, uh, uh, for instance, small pressure, and this is something that you can control in your uh, uh, experimental setup, small pressure means that this term is large, so this term is large, so you will have a lot of hydrogen more hydrogen than molecular hydrogen. Small pressure means that you will have a, the equilibrium, more molecules of H, so atomic hydrogen, atomic hydrogen, than molecular hydrogen. On the other hand, when you have a large pressure, for large pressure at fixed temperature, this term is small, and therefore you, you will have a lot of H2. Large press, pressure means a large number of molecular hydrogen. 
which is very intuitive. Now, of course, the, the same uh, can be obtained when considering the, the temperature, no? Uh, if the temperature is large, but we will see this example uh, uh, next time, uh, you can work out which will be, uh, let's say, the, the error of the chemical uh, reactions in order to reach the equilibrium as a function of temperature and as a function of pressure. So at fixed temperature, what we have here in this formula, which is new, but we, we, which, whose results are very intuitive, is that if you have a small value of the total pressure, uh, the chemical equilibrium says that you will have a lot of uh, uh, atoms of hydrogen whereas you will have a less uh, molecular hydrogen if you have instead a large pressure the formation of molecular hydrogen is uh, favorite and therefore you will have more uh, molecular hydrogen than atomic hydrogen okay so this law of mass action which is uh, basically the law of chemical equilibrium will allow to establish in which direction a reaction will proceed in order to reach the chemical equilibrium, which is based again on the second principle of thermodynamics. Okay, so now next time uh, we will do an example of use uh, of uh, this uh, law of mass action in the case of a uh, thermal ionization of gas, which is something that is very much used also in, uh, in cosmology, for instance. So just to say that uh, uh, this type of formalism is not applied only, well, in chemistry, but also uh, in physics. Okay, and so let me stop here for the moment, and uh, sorry for that problem that we had before, and uh, yeah, we continue next week. So have a nice vacation. Arrivederci, buona giornata. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.